Hello, everybody. Welcome back to this special series of the Studio Ghibli Reviews, hosted by your hosts of Annie A, Annie Nay, of course. As always, I'm your host, Joey. Wait. Wait, wait. So I'm John? I guess I, I'm John, y'all. N- no. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess things are running a little bit different now. <laughs> but yes. Just a little joke to get y'all hyped up, because I know we haven't done a Studio Ghibli review in a while now, so... You know me. I'm not Joey. I'm John. And I'm Joey. All right. Let's get started. Benstown.com. All right, guys. Thank you again for joining us today on this special NEA NEA episode, of course. Because like always during this season... Or during this series, not season, because we review specifically Studio Ghibli films. And today we are reviewing the one that I believe you pulled, right? Uh, yeah, I pulled it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I pulled it. Yep. Today we are reviewing Grave of the Fireflies. This is actually probably the second Studio Ghibli film ever made. So it's pretty old because it was actually so old they didn't even have the usual Studio Ghibli logo of Totoro there. Heck, they basically, to me, it looked like they they basically uh, based it off of World War one of the uh, like World War Two. That's because that's because it is Joe. Yeah, it's set. Grave of Fireflies is technically a short story based off a of fire bombing of Co- the fire bombing of Kobe in 1945. It was one of the last battles of World War Two before the yeah. atom bomb drop. That that's what I thought. The reason why it was <laughs> bombed was because. <coughs> That was a lot of places mm-hmm. where Japan was building a lot of their ships and mm-hmm. what was all their industry, industries were mm-hmm. for the war. And, of course, when America destroyed them, they had no way to rebuild any of weapons or any more ships. Yep. But that's not the point of this series to tell you guys about the bombing. The point of the story is to tell you about the story of the Grave of the Fireflies, which is about these two kids who did live in Kobe during that time period. This is technically like a war tragedy film and technically was considered one of the best and honestly, pretty sad. And I liked it, though. I mean, it was good and all. Um, but I'm not big on war. Like, 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 uh... War films? Yeah, like, war, like actual war films. Like, I'm good with, like, like other like war films that ain't like war films completely but they got a little war at, at war in it you know what i'm saying but like not full complete war films well i guess that means you're technically you're probably a guy who likes maybe let me give you an example did you like saving private ryan with tom hanks uh i doubt i've seen it okay what about pearl harbor even though that had some lovey dovey um, i mean it was okay Damn, it's so hard to say this because it seems like my <laughs> knowledge of media is so much more vast than yours <laughs> in some ways. I mean, I, I know Pearl Harbor, it, but it's just, it's okay. Okay, I'm just trying to find a war movie that you've probably seen. What about any of the new ones like Dunkirk or anything like that? Or Hacksaw Ridge with Andrew Garfield? Uh, I definitely haven't seen any of the new ones because um, I don't really watch war movies. If I choose a movie, it's going to be like an action superhero movie come on now well i mean we've watched the movies that weren't superhero but definitely were a lot of action look at bad boys for example exactly um but they're not that's not like a war movie technically yeah that's cops exactly so i mean i I watch stuff like that but i'm not like if i choose anything it's not i'm not i'm dead it's gonna be like love stories i'm not gonna choose love stories i'm not gonna choose war movies i'm not gonna choose uh uh what else romance you're not gonna choose comedies because they're stupid some comedies not all comedies like i'm cool with jeff dunham Hmm. jeff dunham's a good one um, but I mean, I haven't really paid any attention to any of the new stuff, so. So you guys heard it here. Joey's mainly superhero action and fantasy. That's probably why he loves POTC so much, Pirates of the Caribbean. 
yes pirates of the caribbean is great but we're getting off topic here anyway <laughs> talking about joey's interests basically but basically let's go ahead and jump into the plot of this movie this plot basically begins with seeing a boy who's basically on the verge of death in a train station most likely from starvation because at the in most of this movie, people are dying from either malnourishment or starvation or from radiation sickness because of the bombing and all the fires that they're in. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then basically the whole movie is kind of has that magical zest, I guess you can say, like it, a lot of Studio Ghibli films do. It has that fantasy feel. Yeah. But the whole fantasy feel is basically after the boy and his little sister are dead, they're like recapping everything that got them to where mm-hmm. to this point. Mm-hmm. They're basically li- reliving, reliving their whole life. Yes. And what happens is basically what ha- during the war, they were living in Kobe during the bombing. Their mom went to a shelter, and they went to another shelter, of course. And when the bombing ended, they went to find their mother at a school that was being used for a hospital. The main character, of course, S- 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 Seda... Sorry, couldn't get his name out. Seda, who is the teen, who is a teenager at the time, probably around 14 or 15, he ends up seeing his mother, and she's covered in radiation burns. Mm-hmm. No doubt, because those weren't fought. From what I saw, even though it was animation, those definitely weren't fire burns. It didn't, it didn't look like it either. Uh, so, but, I mean, you could barely see it, because she was wrapped up enough, too, so to where you could see enough. But, I mean, it could be a mixture. It could have been a mixture, but I mean, I know you don't see war movies, but there's a distinction between radiation burns oh, yeah. and a fire burn. I've seen plenty of my I've I've seen plenty of uh, radiation and fire burns. Um, fire burns, uh, personally, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, fire burns just mainly leave you scarred, whereas radiation burns will leave you scarred, but you're still gonna die from the burning uh-huh. and the poisoning from all the radiation. Yep. Unless you can get to an actual hospital. And with, during that time, due to Japan's industry not being able to move fast as America's, hospitals were very hard to come by. Yep. Basically, their mother <coughs> dies from radiation sickness. <coughs> but he keeps it from his sister. Setsuko is her name. And she's only about mm-hmm. four or five years old. They end up going to live with their aunt, but after some difficulties, because she starts treating them harshly, they end up leaving and living on their own. And things just get harder and harder then because they have no way to gain money or to work because there's no jobs because of the way the economy is. Yep. So Seda decides to steal to try to provide for his sister, but she ends up suffering from malnourishment because he can't provide for her and she starts getting rashes everywhere on her body. Mm-hmm. And that's most likely hypo hypnotherma which is basically when there's too much sodium in the body which leaves blotches most likely it's a type of uh, sunburns to make them worse possibly it's, it could be possible source from the sun mm-hmm. basically she becomes so weak she can't even sit up anymore and she dies in her sleep then later he cremates her body and then of course he goes off on his own which is when it leads to the train station and he ends up dying from starvation himself Mm -hmm. (laughs) what was sad to me at the very end was the fact in the very beginning the janitors were treating the corpses just like garbage in the very beginning because there wasn't just him there there were hundreds of people there in that train station who were all dying from the same thing Sorry, guys. This movie's pretty sad. Just going to let you know. Yeah, it, it really is. Oh, also, never mind. I ain't even going to say it. I forgot. It's sad, and it also <laughs> makes shows the cruelties of war. It kind of makes the Americans look like the bad guys. It, it really does. Um, because all you, all you really see is the Americans coming down and bombing them, really, from the American side. That's all you see. You don't see nothing else from the American side, really. No. So, so it makes them it makes them look like they're the bad guys trying to just take out a, a colony or whatever. You a know? country of helpless people, I guess you can colony, say. Colony, country, whatever you want to call it. But little personal opinion, there are no good or bad guys in wars, and there are no winners or losers in a war. Nope. 
I feel like the only bad guy in war is the one that shot the first bullet. Well, that would be Japan then. That's that's what I feel like. Because they brought the war when they attacked us first, and I mean, and, I mean, yeah. if they attacked us first for for what reason? Well, they had they. Had I know things, they had their reasons. But, I'm just saying, like, like, but they still came at us. They attacked us first. They pulled the first trigger. Like that's that's just how I feel personally about it. Yes. Well, I mean, that's how I see it too. But we're not here to talk about war and mm. politics and things like that. We're mm. here to talk about just the movie. Yep. But reception wise, I def this was definitely a good movie in my opinion. I mean, I guess you could say it's more of an it's more of a reason to s- movie to show the stop war, I guess you can say. Mhm. Cuz it shows the harsh realities of war. Yeah. Of what happens basically. And yeah, I'm pretty sure there, in any kind of war, things like that, things, a lot of bad things happen to the innocent people. But I mean, this was actually a great movie in my opinion. I mean, even a great director who was still alive at the time from Japan, Akira Kurosawa, praised the movie himself. And considered it one of his best, probably the best production he's ever seen. Yeah. I mean, it was a good movie, don't get me wrong. For it being a war movie and all, it was a good movie. Um, Now, I didn't watch the very, very, very ending of it. I'm not even going to lie about that part. <clears throat> well, the very... Uh, because I had a lot going on today, but... Well, the very, very ending was basically just them after they... Because remember how they were on that train, like, the whole time... Yeah, I remember they were on the train the whole time. But they were reliving everything. Well, they finally got off the train, and they just look over Co- Kobe now when it's rebuilt. Okay, yeah. See, I uh, I think I uh, I think I had like fifteen minutes left. Yeah, the movie moved kind of fast. Um, but I just I just had a lot going on as well. So, but where we're putting this? Let's see. Where are we going to put it? It's definitely probably in the top four. Now, whether it's over Wind Rises or not, I don't know. But I don't find it better than Spirited Away or Princess Mononoke. No, not better than them two. Definitely not. Um, I forgot what the fourth one was. The Wind Rises. This is the third one. I think it is... It's over that one. But, I mean, of course, you could have a different opinion. We still need to find out whether we're going to say Princess Mononoke is better than Spirited Away or not. But still, I don't think it is because I looked over both again. But we still, but first, just first, we need to find out where Grave of the Firefly sits. But let's see. Just give me a second and I can tell you. I just got to recap it in my head first. I'm on, think, John, think. How did we have it ranked? Okay, so here's what we have so far. We have Spirited Away and Princess Mononoke tied at first, of Mm -hmm. course, but we're going to probably change Spirited Away to first and Princess Mononoke to second. I want to say that. Let's do that. And then, of course, we have Wind Rises at third. And I'm thinking it's pro- maybe better than that. I don't know. Then we have Arietti, of course, at four. It was definitely better than Arietti. Better than Arietti. But the Wind Rises had a good story, too. And they mm-hmm. both and both of these stories technically take place during the same time period, during World War II. Mm-hmm. But the Wind Rises was more about a uh, mechanic building warplanes. Yeah. Whereas this one was actually about the tragedy of a, of the war. So I mean Oh no, I think I'm uh personally we put it in number 4. Yes, I'm thinking that too. Yeah, definitely better, not better than maybe Wind Rise is just a little bit better. I mean, heck the wind rises is actually getting a sequel 
Yeah. The director actually even came back to, you know, mm-hmm. came out of retirement to work on this film. So, I mean, yes, we'll put it there. So, now we have Spirited Away at number one, Princess Mononoke at number two, Wind Rises at number three. Number four now, we have Grave of the Fireflies. Number five, we have Ariete. Number six, we have The Cat Returns. And then number seven, we have My Neighbor Totoro. Number eight, we have Pompoko. And number nine, of course, we have The Garbage Earwig and the Witch. Garbage. I'll never get over how that film is still a Studio Ghibli film, you guys. Sorry, but Earwig and the Witch technically was not a Studio Ghibli film. It didn't even capture the zest of a Studio Ghibli film at all. I mean, come on. CGI for Studio Ghibli? No. Definitely not. That just screams, you know, problems. But I think I've told you guys that enough probably in almost every episode. But now I have to draw our next film. So let's uh, find out what we're drawing, what we're watching next. (laughs) I got one, guys. It didn't take him long. I kind of shook it up. You want me to shake it up more and just pick it in? Nah, you're good. Okay. But here we go, guys. Let me find out what we got next. The next one I picked. I picked Porco Rosso. Okay. Yeah. You guys heard it. (laughs) Yeah, Porco Rosso. The one about the flying pig. (laughs) But yes, you guys heard it here. Our next film that we will be reviewing in our Studio Ghibli series is Porco Rosso. Until next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm your host, John. And I'm Joey. We'll see you on the next show.